Hey, curl friends. I don't know who's here. If you're here, let me know if you can hear me in the comments. Um, usually the beginning of this is impossible to tell. I do my checks and then sometimes, you know, still there's no sound. <laughs> so let me know if you can hear me. If you can hear me, just give me a thumbs up. That'd be great. Hi, Kimmy Lee. I can't wait to share these tips either. Honestly, these tips have really helped me transform my fine natural hair. Um, you know, when I started without using these tips, I felt like I was in a place where I didn't necessarily feel comfortable with my fine strands. Um, and now since really learning how to deal with my strands, I feel so much more comfortable. Um, and yes, you're 100% right that these tips are absolutely needed um, because it, it like a bunch of us struggle with it, right? Like so many of us absolutely do struggle with this. So I'm just gonna pop on uh, YouTube through my actual app here on my other uh, device on my phone to see if anybody is here. Um, and if you're able to hear me, cause I'm not quite sure if this is actually connecting right now. And I'm hoping that it is um, because you never know, right? <laughs> so I see that it is actually connecting um, and I feel like I can hear it as well. So that's really great. Um, how was your week? How was your week? How was your day? Uh, it's Friday. <laughs> Everybody loves Friday. I am definitely one of those people who love Fridays. It's just nice to end the week, relax, and all of that good stuff. The other piece that I wanted to take care of before we jump into these tips is thank you so much for all of your engagement in the polls um, on Find Natural Hair Rocks. I absolutely adore connecting with each and every one of you. I also appreciate your voice because as we, you know, work together in terms of our fine natural hair journey and now our personal development journey as well, um, it's really important that the conversation is back and forth. So I can talk all I want here on Fine Natural Hair Rocks, but um, really and truly what my goal is, and my intention as, you know, your girlfriend is to really connect with you and to understand where you are on your fine natural hair journey so that I can meet you along the way and kind of smooth in some of the bumps, smooth in some of the challenges that are bound to crop up your way. Um, if you're new to Fine Natural Hair Rocks, my name is Lavinia Latham. I am a lawyer by trade or by profession rather, um, but as it relates to hair, I'm tried and true. I mean, the pandemic forced me to figure out my hair and as I figured out my hair on my own, I realized that it's not that hard and that there are just, it's a formula. Like anything else in law, we deal with formulas, um, legal formulas. And here with like natural hair, um, I just broke it down to a science. And that's how I've been able to really retain length um, and to really enjoy my strands, whether they're curly, whether they're, you know, blown out, whether they're revered, whatever, right? Or, or silk pressed, whatevs, right? Hi, Nadine. Coming in, um, definitely shout me out if you're there. I can only see numbers, um, so I can't see names. But if you are there, thank you so much for joining. So how do we just jump on into these tips? The winter time is absolutely just damaging galore to find natural strands and not just find natural strands. Let me know in the comment section if you have, you know, what you would consider to be coarse natural hair or thick natural strands, whatever the case might be. Hi, Jesus forever. Love your name. Love it. <laughs> um, but yes, I feel like, you know, if you've got any type of natural hair, it's naturally going to be uh, more fragile in nature. It's, it is more fragile in nature than any other type of hair, which is why we really do need to tackle our journeys in ways that are actually going to work. Uh, hi, Patricia. What's up? Hey, girlfriend. So yeah, like I, I really do believe that you want to be doing certain things, whether you're a, a thick hair natural or a fine hair natural, you really want to be doing certain things that are going to, um, you know, positively impact your journey. Um, and it really doesn't matter if you don't identify as a fine natural haired person because, you know, natural hair is fragile in nature. That being said, the first tip that I have for you today is that you're going to want to make sure that you have a very good quality hair oil. So a good quality hair oil is something like jojoba. I really like jojoba oil because it very closely matches um, the natural sebum that you have on your scalp. And that will find its ways uh, to the rest of your hair um, if you are applying it to the ends of your hair. So when you are applying the, seed, the, the jojoba oil to your hair, you want to start at the ends first and then kind of work your way down. So um, that's my number one tip. The other thing that I really like, um, castor oil is amazing, Jamaican black castor oil. 
I personally, um, I, I can't use Jamaican black castor oil on my scalp itself, just because if you're anything like me, you've got sensitive skin and so, or sensitive scalp. So I don't necessarily apply those things directly. I want to say for people who, you know, can't necessarily afford all the products out there, or maybe you don't want to spend so much money on products. That's fair. You don't have to do this. <laughs> you probably shouldn't do this. Um, but I mean, and, and bear in mind, a lot of that is also uh, PR. So it's not just me, you know, going crazy and buying up a whole bunch of products. Um, a lot of it is actually sent to me. I can tell you there's like a full row down there um, that's just PR. But nevertheless, um, a good hair oil that's going to really help you during the winter time that I really love and seems to be all over the place and that you should probably purchase before, um, you know, the prices go up is this one right here. And I know you've heard of it. I know you've heard of it. There's no way you haven't. It's the Mayel. This is their rosemary mint scalp and hair strengthening oil. So I want to say all of the products that I'm mentioning today, they are located in the Fine Natural Rocks uh, Amazon shop. And if they're not located there, just let me know. And I will absolutely, um, you know, find a good spot that you can purchase it from that won't be overly expensive. Um, full disclosure, if you do purchase from one of the links provided in today's video, a small portion of that um, purchase at no extra cost to you will come to find Natural Hair Rocks, which goes towards the production fees and just the behind the scenes costs of running um, an, a show, a bit small business like Find Natural Hair Rocks. And Adu says, I love Sesame me oil but i'm trying hibiscus seed oil next that sounds absolutely lovely in the doom like that's what i'm saying like there are so many different oils out there what i like about this oil particularly is like number one like it's gone viral which is kind of cool um and i was using it before it went viral so mm. <laughs> but <laughs> um it's got like soybean oil is the number one um, oil in it which is neither here nor there like that's pretty much a, like a cheap oil in my understand my understanding but the second oil is a uh, castor oil it's got rosemary leaf oil jojoba like i mentioned before the jojobas um and then it also has peppermint oil like it just has like a really great amount of oils in it and i think it was marketed as like over 30 something amazing oils they're just so good for fine natural strands so there's that the second tip that i wanted to share with you today is you know using a moisture rich deep conditioner so the winter time is drying. It is so drying. It will suck all of the moisture right out of your hair. Um, you know, if you're outside and the wind is blowing really hard, you're inside and, you know, you've got your heat going and that's just drying out the strands as well. Like, mm. <laughs> between the weather outside and what's going on inside to combat the weather outside, uh, there's a lot that's battering your hair, right? Like, it's no coincidence, girlfriend, that when you look to people who live in warmer climates that don't necessarily deal with harsh winters, they tend to have a lot more moisture to the hair. They tend to have a lot more... Um, just overall more ease in growing their hair, particularly as it relates to moisture. So if you find a moisture rich deep conditioner, the ones that I absolutely love, um, I've, I had a thing for sultanicals for a bit. There's a ton of sultanicals up there on the top shelf. Um, but I also really like the stuff that you can find anywhere. So, uh, you know, Shea Moisture has a really nice oil, um, deep conditioner. They've got a new line that's coming out that I'm so excited to share. Uh, this new line is called, well, it's kind of like, it's not really a new line, but more like a, um, I guess a re, uh, launch of what was there before. And it's their high porosity and low porosity line. Let me know in the comment section if you remember that line, but girlfriend, it's back. <laughs> it's back. Um, I don't have it here with me right now to show you, but it is absolutely back and it is fantastic. So uh, keep your eyes locked here on Fine Natural Hair Rocks because I will be dropping a video between today and Monday that's going to show you a little bit more about that line, but it's really, really nice. Um, but in terms of what you can find really quickly on Amazon, what you can find really quickly in your pharmacies, um, I personally find that like, again, Mayel has really good uh, moisture rich deep conditioners. Tijin, that's thank God it's natural has really nice one. The one deep conditioner that I fell in love with the moment I used it was the Tijin Honey Miracle Mask. Oh my gosh, girlfriend, <laughs> it's so good. There's also, I've got a video here on Fine Natural Hair Rocks where I talk about my favorite uh, deep conditioners, particularly my favorite moisturizing deep conditioners. And so if you're interested in, you know, the top ones, I still use them to this day. You know, there are a ton of products that I try. That is true. 
but there are some that I return to all the time. And I think if you're looking for a good one, um, whether it be a moisture deep conditioner or whether it be a um, you know, protein based deep conditioner, I think that either way it's going to help you. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop it in the chat and you can definitely check it out after our live stream together. Uh, my miracle 79 says, I love the high porosity line. Yes. It was so good. My best friend, one of my best friends, Nikita, she has really high porosity hair and she loves it. I had low porosity to medium porosity hair. Um, if I use a lot of oils, then it would, you know, lean more towards low porosity. If I'm using, uh, you know, less oils, it will lean more towards medium porosity. And so for me, I really love the low porosity line, um, but it's amazing. Nadum says, just saw both porosity lines at Ulta. There you go. That's amazing. So yes, I actually, you know, shout outs to Shea Moisture. They did send me some PR um, that included the two lines. And I'm really excited to try. I haven't gotten a chance to try it yet um, because I am in a curly state and I'm enjoying what it's looking like right now. <laughs> and Crawford, you know exactly what I mean when I say that because girl, these curls, they be doing their own thing sometimes. But um, yeah, that's really good to know that it's in Ulta. If you're in the U.S., then Ulta is a really, um, you know, accessible place to get it. No matter what area of the U.S. you're in, if Ulta is there, chances are likely you can get products for your textured hair there as well. My Miracle 79 says, you ever try Aussie Moist Conditioner? I've never tried that, but that I've heard really great things about as well. Um, definitely more affordable and absolutely accessible as well. So thank you so much for mentioning that because I think it's really important that we talk about deep conditioners that are accessible at every single price point. Um, you don't have to spend a whole like $30, $40 on a deep conditioner. You just don't. Um, I truly feel like I'm at the stage now as a, as a natural where I really do believe that as long as you have the basic foundations, girlfriend, you don't need to spend and go broke and like go into debt over these products. Like it's truly, truly not necessary. Hi, TJ. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming to today's live stream. Um, I wanted to let you all know as well that today's live stream, if you do have to hop out and hop back, um, please rest assured that this is going to be available here on Find Natural Hair Rocks permanently. So um, yeah, you can absolutely do that as well. Hi, Carl. Thank you so much for supporting hubby. We appreciate it. <laughs> so yes, um, there's that. Then there was also a line. Um, I forgot the name of the line. It was like a blue line. I think it was curls or um, anyways, there's if you go to the pharmacy, there are so many products that you can try. Even Maui Moistures has got some really nice uh, moisturizing deep conditioners as well. Um, who else has some good ones? There's a really a fantastic one that I love. Um, and I think I, it is available in the Amazon, the Fine Natural Hit Rocks Amazon shop. And that one is called Alakay Naturals, their honey and sage deep conditioner. The moisture on that, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, in terms of tip number three, definitely find your protein deep conditioner and stick to it. Oh, girlfriend, you do not want to be missing out on your protein, particularly if you've got fragile strands, if you've got fine natural strands, protein is very important. Now, for those of you who feel like your hair might be protein sensitive, um, I feel like that's a bit of a myth. Um, being the fact that like hair is nat is actually made up of proteins, so it can't be protein sensitive. But what I think people might be confusing is the fact that in that moment, their hair doesn't need any more protein. Doesn't necessarily, or maybe the other products they're using has protein in it. And so you on top of the protein is too much because like anything else is a balancing act, right? You could have too much moisture, but you could have too much protein as well too. So um, a good place to start if you're fresh to this stuff and you don't know what to do is you can start with the Mayel, uh, the Babasu and Mint Deep Conditioner. That one is a little on the pricey side. I know here in Canada, it could get to like $22.99, depending on where you buy it. Um, in the US, things tend to be priced a little bit less. I would say lean into the sales. Um, so I know most of us here on Fine Natural Hair Rocks, a good chunk of us are watching from the US. So lucky for you, you've got access to things like Rexel. You've got access to things like Ulta. Um, actually, I don't know if Ulta sells Mayel. Girlfriend, let me know if Ulta sells my eye. I, I don't remember seeing that. Maybe it does. Actually, I think it does. Anyways, Olaplex is another one that I think is really good if you are trying to like lean into proteins for the first time. So if you're leaning into proteins for the first time, you want to be careful. Um, that's a good place to start as well, because yes, it's a protein treatment, 
but it's a lighter protein treatment. So like less can go wrong um, in that sense. So once you get your protein and moisture levels balanced, you will start to see a lot more length retention. You will start to see a lot less fine natural hair breakage. TJ says, I was not impressed with the Aussie Moist collection. I find two great deep conditioners are the Dove Deep Conditioner and the Honey Miracle Mask from Garnier Whole Blends. Both are less than $6. You see, that's fantastic. Like, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that right now because I think it's really important that we are understanding, like, where we can get cheaper alternatives. Um, in terms of DIYs, you will not see a lot of DIYs here on Fine Natural Your Rocks. Um, I wish I had the time to do it. I just unfortunately don't. Um, between, you know, my family, my husband, my dog, <laughs> and my, my job, like, <laughs> find out your rocks. <laughs> There's just not enough time to create DIY products. The other issue with DIY products is sometimes they are not stabilized. So you could accidentally be, you know, applying molds and stuff to your hair. I'm a little bit of a germaphobe sometimes, girlfriend. Like, uh, I can't do with the, 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 you know, the uncertainty. <laughs> I can't. So, um, but yes, if you are somebody who is interested in DIYs, that could be really useful as well too. Just do your research for sure. Um, Grace says, I use a banana oat protein treatment. I use it once a month. That sounds fantastic. See, like, so long as you have like some type of a regimen, you have some type of a, a regular, uh, you know, schedule that you're doing with your hair as it relates to protein and moisture, that is really important. Um, yes, my Miracle 79, the Mayel conditioner is amazing. That one is a holy grail for a lot of fine nat for a lot of naturals, period, for a reason. It really is amazing. Um, I don't think there's anything out there that compares to it for me, anyways. There might be something for you, but um, I don't think that there's anything out there that I've seen that balances the moisture and the protein elements in the same way that that Mayel one does. Uh, PSR076 says, I was not impressed by Aussie products. I didn't get why people were saying they have good slip. You know what? I feel like I did try Aussie once upon a time and I wasn't impressed either. And I didn't try it again because <laughs> I was just like, mm, this looks like breakage and I'm not a fan of breakage. You know, yeah, I was one of those when I was in my stage of like trying everything and anything under the sun. Um, I did try it because I liked the price point, but it wasn't necessarily working. And I mean, to that point, that was just the experience with Aussie doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the experience with other cheaper products, because there are some really good, like, you know, high quality, cheaper products out there. There really are. Um, and you just have to kind of try, you know, trial and error it to find what works the best for you. Shea Moisture seems to be having some lower price points as well. I did see Shea Moisture products at Walmart. I mean, mind you, I saw my L2. Um, but I did, I do see Shea Moisture showing up on sale a lot more often, which is great too. Uh, Nadum says, I'm going to try Shea Radiance Keratin Mask next and Ulta does sell Mayel. Nice. Good to know. That Shea Radiance Keratin Mask I've heard of, um, and that one seems promising as well too. Uh, PSR 076, I tend to spend a bit more for deep conditioners. I don't use them every wash day, but more on a needed basis. Yeah. So, you know, you could be that natural as well, too, in terms of like trying to balance how much all of this is costing, right? You don't have to purchase expensive products for every single stage. Deep conditioners are very important. <laughs> um, it's so important. Like I, if I had to boil down the number one thing that changed my hair trajectory that really improved my hair it's deep conditioning. Cause I kid you not, girlfriend, when I was younger, I wasn't deep conditioning my hair and I was absolutely experiencing brittleness. It was breaking off. It was not retaining length. It was just doing the most in the worst of ways. And so by just imp implementing more deep conditioning treatments, regular deep conditioning treatments to start, I started off at like once per week. And then I, you know, now I deep condition like every other week, sometimes once a month, but really being very regular with it at first until you start to see the health of your hair improve, then you can kind of drop down from it after. Patricia says, I like Allocate products. I have the black soap moisturizing shampoo and the honey and sage deep conditioner. Yes, Rochelle really killed it with the Allocate Naturals uh, products. She is amazing. If you guys don't know who Rochelle Graham is, she's a OG natural hair YouTuber right here on YouTube um, who was, you know, just making videos just like this. <laughs> and she started making some products and she started selling her products and they went wild. So amazing, amazing stuff. The next tip is to wear a silk scarf or a satin bonnet under your hats. So oftentimes we throw on a hat and we think it's okay because we're not lying down in bed. The 
the big tip is to never go to sleep without your bonnet, never go to sleep without your scarf. I think all of us know that by now. But I think one of the more understated tips is to make sure whatever is touching your hair has some type of a satin lining or a silk lining underneath it. So if you're, you know, maybe you're somebody who would rather just throw on your bonnet and then throw on your hat on top. That's a okay. This entire summer, you can ask my entire network. I have no shame in wearing my little bonnet on top underneath my hat and then throwing the hat on top. Now, when I get indoors, I will take it off. But I mean, there's no shame in that. Like it's serving its function. I even have some hats that I've gone ahead and sewn in um, the ones that I wear a lot because I find it really important to just lock in that moisture. You don't want the cotton rubbing upon your hair with those cotton hats. You know, the cute little ones with the pom poms um, here in Canada, we call them toques. You don't want to, your toque to be like pulling moisture from your hair, right? You really want that your toque or your hat, whatever is absolutely going to be, um, protecting you and if you're from like a hot climate like you know maybe you're from uh down south maybe you're from florida maybe you're from the islands maybe you're from you know wherever right that has a lot of sun even your caps right that can cause a lot of breakage over time too so just being aware of that um that really and truly it's not just about in your sleep it's about any type of fabric that can pull moisture as opposed to as opposed to retaining the moisture that you've got tj says i have to deep condition every week because my hair is high porosity so i can lose moisture easily absolutely so that's why here on fine natural hair rocks the tips are always to do to take these tips and apply it to your hair because ultimately speaking you are the master of your hair you are the expert of your hair you're the one who's gonna know exactly what's best for it and the way you're going to know what's best for it is by trial and error by you know seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. So there are some things that work amazingly for me, but might not work too well for you. And that's just because we've got different hair characteristics, different genetics, different climates, different products, different everything, right? Um, so this is the reason why the focus here on Fine Natural Hair Rocks is to show you what I'm doing, but also to show and educate on how you can implement similar practices, but for your particular hair. So um, for me, deep conditioning every single week is far too much. But for TJ, that's perfect, right? And if you've got high porosity hair, that might be perfect for you too. Uh, CeeLo says, has anyone tried the InnerSense products? I've seen the InnerSense products, CeeLo, but I haven't actually tried them yet. Happy to try them if InnerSense wanted to partner like that. But at this stage, um, I'm just trying to get through that. <laughs> I'm really trying to get through that um, before I start purchasing new products. Um, yeah, I just... Yeah, <laughs> but it does look like a really fantastic line. It really does. TJ says, I spend more money on my stylers because I found those are cheaper, but very effective deep conditioners that I mentioned earlier before, earlier, sorry. Yeah, so even stylers, like it's it could be, again, trial and error to find what works. Like there are stylers that work really well for me in the wintertime. They don't work as well for me in the summertime. Then there are stylers that vice versa. They work really well in the summer, but not necessarily in the winter. The Fifth tip that I have for you is that when you are de uh, detangling your strands, you want to be detangling your strands with like a wide tooth comb. So something like this, whoop, and that has a lot of stuff in it. I am so sorry. <laughs> so this is like my favorite wide tooth comb. I like to go in my strands with my fingers first, and then I will go in with my wide tooth comb second. This one is really amazing. This is the Magic Sageman one. It's also available in the uh, Fine Natural Hair Rocks shop on Amazon. The reason why I love it, and I've had this for years now, like this comb is expensive. It's not a cheap comb. I think I paid like 20 something dollars for it at the time. But like I said, I've had it for at least three, four years now, and it hasn't failed me. The reason why it's expensive is because it's a seamless comb. So fine natural hair strands are fragile. They break off really easily. You want to give your hair a fighting chance to not break off every single time manipulation is happening. And so because this is lacking seams, um, it really is just like one piece of plastic all the way through. Um, there's no ridges to break off on it. So this is the Magic Sageman 9, I think it was, comb. Again, it's available in the Fine Natural Hair Rock shop, and that link is available in the description box. So, um, you know, one thing that was really prohibiting my growth, and not so much my growth, let me be accurate, my length retention was the high manipulation that I was causing to my strands during the detangling process. During the winter time, your strands are even drier, and so they might be even more um, loving up on each other than usual, right? 
to avoid that, you want to make sure that you're being a little bit more diligent than normal with your hair um, so that you can avoid breaking off those precious strands that you're doing everything right to grow out. So um, that's really important because it you can get stuck in that for so long. Like, I feel like I was stuck there for like at least a few years where I was like, I don't understand why my hair isn't retaining length. And it was because my detangling practices were terrible. Now, the way you can avoid that, some people, you know, they really benefit from finger detangling only. I've tried that. It didn't work for me. Some others have really benefited from using things like the Felicia Leatherwood brush. I've tried that. Absolutely. It smoothened my hair and it, it, it looked like it was working. But did it work for me in terms of length retention? No. Then, you know, others, you know, rely solely on things like this. So it really took that trial and error piece to understand that for me, what was working the best was starting with my fingers first and then going in with this Hercules Sageman 9 uh, comb after. So in order for you to implement this tip, what I would say is that just give yourself a time period. So whatever you're doing, give yourself a time period to maybe tweak one thing. So since we're talking about detangling, tweak your detangling, pay attention to that and look at how much hair you're losing. That's really important. So even take a picture like it looks weird. People won't understand why you have balls of hair in your phone. Doesn't matter. It's not their phone anyways. <laughs> so go ahead, take your pictures. And then, you know that, hey, when I was using just the Felicia Leatherwood brush, I was getting maybe a palm of hair. When I decided to go ahead with my fingers, as well as my, you know, Hercules Sageman comb, I had like half a handful of hair and I changed nothing other than detangling. That is how you're going to hone in on what is working for you and what is not working for you. The next thing that I would say is that, you know, on a regular basis, just, you know, in the morning, like you could feel your hair. Like if you feel your hair and it feels dry, just go in with some water. Um, I've got a couple of different sprays over there. Um, that show exactly like, you know, the, the, there's an intensive spray from Bondi Boost. You can find that at Ulta as well. Um, there's a really lovely line called um, Oyin Handmade, and they've got really nice uh, curl sprays as well. Or you can make your own. So this is one place where I'm okay doing a DIY because like, you know, aloe vera is something that is just super easy to just add water to and, and go. So um, something like that can really benefit in terms of like adding the moisture back to your hair really, really quickly as well. Um, and for a good price, right? Um, my Urban Garden says, I agree. Why tooth comb? I was stuck at shoulder length for years before I figured it out. Yeah, it's a real thing, girlfriend. Like if you're not detangling your hair properly, you're doing everything right. You're deep conditioning, you're eating right, you're massaging, you're protective styling. But then, you know, when it comes to wash day or taking out those protective styles, you're just damaging the ends. Length retention gone, <laughs> 100%. And it's so frustrating because like that is like a good, strong reason for a plateau. Tammy Moore says, I had that aha moment and had to go to finger detangling for my fine hair. Sounds like there's quite a few of us who've been going through that. And I think it's understated how often that happens to us as fine naturals. Naturals in period, I don't want to be exclusive, but I think with fine strands, like they are, they're missing an entire layer of protection. So they break off so much more easier. And that's the reason why we really need to be aware of um, what we're doing to our strands, particularly during the detangling process. Um, so yes, that tip was to make sure, you know, just paying attention to how your hair feels on a daily, you might have to re-spritz, re-moisturize more in the wintertime um, than in the summertime. That's a-okay. That's exactly what's expected and necessary um, if you are starting to learn your hair. And, you know, if you're at a place where you don't know what that feels like, because I remember that I was there, girlfriend, um, you may not know when your hair feels dry versus when it feels moisturized. In that case, I would say, you know, moisturize your hair, let it sit for like maybe an hour, touch it and feel what it feels like. In the morning, touch it again and see what it feels like. And then you'll start to get an idea of like when it's super moisturized because you just did it. <laughs> and then when it's not that moisturized because, you know, time has passed and it started to evaporate out. If that is a little bit too involved, because lives are busy, let's be real. Um, the other thing that you could do is just, you know, be um, consistent with adding the moisture back to your hair on maybe a daily or every other day basis. Daily, if you're starting to, you know, up the moisture levels in your strands, every other day, if your strands are at a place where they're, you know, they feel fine, they, they look fine, they feel fine, like it's not a big deal, but you just want to be okay. And then kind of go from there. 
The other tip that I would say is you want to make sure in the summer, in the winter time, sorry, that you're installing protect like productive, <laughs> protective styles. So there's so much misinformation out here, girlfriend. And I actually was one of those people who fell prey to the misinformation that, you know, things like box braids will grow my hair. Things like mini twists will grow my hair. Um, mini braids will grow my hair. Girlfriend, none of those things worked for me. <laughs> like none of them. Um, they're beautiful styles, but did they work for me in terms of protective styling? No, right? So it really is important to be aware of what's working for you and not what's working for everyone else. I have so many friends, so many family members who will install things like mini twists, you know, even crow friends right here on Find Natural Hair Rocks who get really great results by doing things like mini twists or doing things like washing goes or doing things like, you know, mini braids. Me, if I do, you know, say for the washing go, because I haven't really tried that, but if I do things like, mini twists or mini braids or mini anything really, that is breakage city. <laughs> and so, you know, you want to stay away from those things that sound like they're going to work for you, but they don't necessarily work for you. And the way you can tell that is kind of by returning to that tip that from detangling, whereby you're just aware of how much hair you're losing. So the thing about protective styles, especially with extensions, is it's a lot of manipulation to go in and it's a lot of manipulation to come out. If you're losing a lot of hair putting the style in and you're losing a lot of hair taking the style out, chances are likely that that's not helping you. Also, another way to check if this protective style is not a good one for you is if you install the protective style, say this month, the beginning of the month, March is here, first of March, you take the style out the end of March, March 30th, so to speak, and you have like the exact same hair that's like the same length retention, despite having like this much growth. That's not a good sign either, right? So for me, what I do to avoid all of this is, um, you know, paying attention to those things and documenting it because we put so much information into our minds all the time. Documenting things is really going to help to remind you that, hey, when I installed the kinky twist, they were beautiful, but... I came out of it with thin ends. That's not a style for me. You know, through trial and error, I've really learned that if I want a protective style and I want to leave my hair alone, two braids. <laughs> That's it. One like this, one like that. And throw on a wig and call it a day. That works for me. Now, not all of us like wigs. I saw how every, <laughs> I saw it in the, the polls. Like, we're not all wig friendly over here. We're not even all weed friendly over here. And that's fine. But that's what it means when it, you know, you find what works for you and you really lean into the things that are working and lean away from the things that are not working. Grace says, I'm still trying to find a good protective style. My crochet braids go old in a month and I see no new growth. So Grace, that's a, that's a, that's a, a risk factor right there, right? Or like, that's a sign, a red flag, I, I meant to say, um, in the sense that like, you know, you're applying this protective style, you take it out. A month is a long time. And if after a month you're not seeing any length retention, it's not because your hair is not growing. Um, because if your hair wasn't growing, like just by ner by nature of like, um, you know, just natural hair fall, you would end up with like spots that were bald. And it would just increasingly be thinning, thinning, thinning until there's nothing left, right? If that's not happening, it's safe to say your hair is growing. It's just the length retention is off. And so I would say... And it sounds like you're um, you're on at this level anyways, because you said you're trying to find a good protective style. But I would say maybe lean into something else away from the crochets. You know, full disclosure, I tried crochet braids. They didn't work for me either. Um, and that's not something that I'm particularly going to try again. I didn't like how it looked on me. Perhaps it could have been the way the install process took place. I don't know. Um, but it wasn't something that I intend on doing again. Um, cause it, like, like I said before, the aesthetic wasn't there for me and neither was the purpose of it, which is length retention. Um, my urban garden says I no longer do box braids, kinky twists only. I was losing hair in the takedown. Yes. Kinky twists are an easy takedown. Yes. So many truths in this comment. I use co-wash to take out knots and no longer than six weeks. Bingo. So this is exactly, this is similar to my experience. Like I find, you know, box braids, they're beautiful. They're gorgeous. Like I'm never going to take that away from it. I absolutely love a good box braid set. 
But girlfriend, I'm not going to kid myself anymore. That does not work for me for protective styling. If I'm calling it a protective style, that is a lie because <laughs> it's not causing protective styling elements. I don't see massive new growth after it. I don't see thicker hair after it. None of that. Kinky twist, yes. I have noticed that I... um you know, through kinky twists, I will have a little bit more growth and, and less loss at the, the, the takedown stage. But even that, that can be damaging as well, depending on how you do that. Now, you know, this is a bonus tip because it wasn't part of today's live stream. But, you know, there are ways to take down extensions, both uh, braids, box braids and kinky twists. If you're interested in that with very minimal to no breakage, if you're interested in that, let me know. And I will definitely make a video for you on that because the last sets that I've had, Girlfriend, I came out with so much length retention. It was amazing. It really was. Um, and I'm really, really grateful for that. So it is a part now, particularly the kinky twist, not the box braids um, in terms of protective styling, but both styles can be used to continue to you know, move forward on my uh, fine natural hair journey in ways that are conducive to the goals that I'm trying to reach. Urban, my Urban Garden says, try finger comber wigs or other half wigs. I love finger comber wigs. They're beautiful. And half wigs as well. Lace is hard and half wigs with a natural texture are awesome for me. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that comment because this is precisely what I do for my particular journey. So on the day-to-day, -day, work every single day, really, if I'm not doing this, or if I, it's not revered or something like that, then I will go ahead and wear everything that's in this comment. I have the finger comber wigs, love it. Have the half wigs that are, you know, matching my texture, love it too. I find that if you are using things like wigs, um, I never wear lace wigs. The only time I wore it was for my wedding and I already have a pretty short forehead. Um, so that's not a good look and I'm not willing to lose edges for that. Like if you've been following my natural hair rocks, I lost edges in the past and that was not fun. So <laughs> it wasn't because of wigs, but no. <laughs> I'm not trying to go down that path again. So lace wigs are not for me, but um, half wigs, especially the ones where you don't have to implement too much manipulation to get the textures to match. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, in terms of, oh, on that protective styling tip. So once you find the protective styling that works for you, some people can get away with protective styling on a weekly basis and see length retention. I would make the argument that if you've got more looser textured strands, you might be able to get away with like, you know, shorter protective styling um, moments. But if you've got tighter strands, you might want to keep it in a little bit longer just because the manipulation, the tighter the coil is the more fragile and more likely and faster it is for it to break off. So for me, I like to keep my protective styles in for at least, um, sometimes I do a week, but sometimes I'll do two weeks sometimes even four weeks um, in terms of, you know, just trying to keep the same style and depending on what it is. My wigs, I tend to go between a one to two weeks. My, um, you know, like things like if I were doing like kinky twists or goddess locks, I love goddess locks, um, that I will keep in for like about a month. No more than a month it has to come out or else it's just far too long and it will cause more harm than good. G Nakenza, I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your name, girlfriend. Uh, for kinky twists, letting go of the perfect hairstyle aesthetic also helps a lot. I no longer care that my parts are perfectly squared shaped. I rather go with a more natural parting. I love that you said that because, you know, for us out here who <laughs> may not be the best with styling our own hair, that's me. <laughs> um, that perfectionism piece can definitely have like a chokehold and really prevent movement on forward to really achieve these looks, right? And let's be real, you know, the world is expensive. Like I'm seeing kinky twist installs going for like 300, 400, 500 dollars. Um, and I can't blame the stylist because inflation is real and everybody still has to eat. Everybody still has to live. Everybody still has to exist, right? So um, yeah, the more we can learn to uh, figure out our own hair, the better. I love that though. Letting go of the perfectionism bit is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Island Girl says, hey, ladies, I'm late. Never late, girl. Thank you for coming through. And thank you so much to everyone. If you are enjoying this live stream, please go ahead and smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed as well. I promise at least one video per week. Those weeks where I'm able to, you know, drop a little bit more, I will. But you can rest assured that there will always be an uh, upload on Mondays. Every single Monday, there's something new coming out here on Find Natural Hair Rocks. And our polls are always you know, on and popping and kicking. We're connecting every single day through our community poll as well. Um, that is really the spot where it's on and popping and we're connecting. So 
yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of tip number eight, girlfriend, this is the bane of all of our existence. Trims, they are so important. At the beginning of my journey, I hated trims. Like, <laughs> I hated trims, hated it with a passion. And I would go, I would say the first six to seven years of my journey, I was avoiding trims and I would get them maybe once per year, um, very, very minimally because the idea was that I wanted as long hair as possible. Um, that's always been my thing. I've always wanted to see how long my hair could grow to really fight back against that narrative that black girls can't have long hair, right? And so I'm here to say that ever since I started uh, scheduling those trims and getting them done more regularly, that's when I started seeing the length retention. In the winter time, it's even more crucial that you get your trims on a regular basis because the air, the battering of the scarves, the everything, it's just, you know, causing even more friction on those fragile ends, which is causing more need to go in and get it trimmed off. Just get rid of the dead ends and move on. Um, so, and that has helped exponentially in terms of, you know, getting rid of the fine natural hair breakage during the winter time. Um, pow, 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 pow. <laughs> Love it. Hey there. Thank you for coming. Lady J says, just found and subbed to your channel this week. Thank you. Welcome to the Crow Friend Crew, Lady J. Nice to see someone talk about fine natural hair. The struggle is real. Girlfriend, it is real. It is so real. And that is why I'm so happy we're all here together so that we can, you know, give each other the support, let each other know exactly what's working, what's not working. I've got type 4 hair. There's 4A in there, 4B, 4C. There's all kinds of curls in there, and I've managed to keep them on my head. Um, but it was a lot when I tell you what, it was a lot, it was a lot of trial and error. And so if I can shorten someone's journey so that they can enjoy their natural beauty as is, why not? <laughs> why not? Um, so welcome, Lady J. Island Girl says the only Aussie products that I use are the Miracle Coil shampoo in the purple bottle and the twisting gel. That's interesting. I've got to check those out. I've never really used those. I'm not a huge twisting gel type person, but that looks really interesting. And, you know, that's a really good tip for those of us who are out here doing braid outs or, you know, twist outs with the twisting gels. Really good. Hi, Allison. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. If you're joining um, and you're joining on late, don't worry. This is going to be here available on the long term forever right here on Find Natural Hair Rocks. It should be it will be saved. So no worries. Patricia says, I do my own crochet braids, nice. And I am not having a problem with them. Plus I only leave them in for two to three weeks. That's amazing. See, that level of independence, that level of autonomy over your own strands is amazing. The other piece I think that's so important to learn how to uh, you know, style your own hair, and it's a challenge that I'm putting up on myself as well, is that it gives you the opportunity to take your hair into your own control. So oftentimes, and I've experienced this, you know, I'm doing everything right at home. And then I go to the stylist, I get a, I get a style installed, and I'm at the mercy of whoever's the stylist. That's not good. If you're doing your own styles yourself, you're Patricia, you know, you're able to do your own kinky twists, your own extensions, that's going to help you combat a lot of the fine natural hair breakage as well. Because that detangling, while people are trying to, you know, detangle the strands, and then maybe put an extension on, or maybe, you know, braid a cornrow in, whatever, that combing bit, that, that like, you know, that energy, even the energy, like, I know it sounds, you know, it doesn't sound, it sounds like woohoo, but even the energy, if you're angry, and you're touching your hair, I kid you not, it's just logical that you're going to experience breakage, you know, and sometimes people come into your hair and they, and they don't have the energy that you have. You might be in a good, relaxed state and that person may be stressed for whatever reason. I mean, we're in a pandemic. There could be a lot of reasons why they're stressed. Um, and then you start to feel the impacts on your hair. You can avoid all of that by just learning how to do it yourself. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, again, the struggle is real. If you want to see me stroll on camera... <laughs> to learn how to do some of these styles let me know in the comment section i'll be sure to make videos about it but um yeah the struggle is real i agree with you completely as it relates to styling it looks so easy it's not easy it really isn't especially when you're trying to like do your own head right um hey esther welcome welcome thank you so much for coming to the curl friend crew so many new names thank you thank you for coming also, um, you know, if you know anybody who has fine strands, even if they don't have fine strands, if you know somebody who's struggling with their natural hair journey, then these tips can help. 
Um, they don't have to identify as having fine natural hair per se, but if they are struggling, um, this is the place for them, for sure. Island Girl says Aussie Miracle Coils products in the purple bottom are specifically for black hair. I didn't know that. I'm going to go look for that because those products are pretty decently priced. Again, after I get through this, I'm going to go look for it just to see. Not going to buy it, but just going to look for it just to see because that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, so some girlfriends are going to try it out. Yeah. Allison says, I do my own mini or two strand twist. No extensions usually leave in for two to three weeks. See, that's amazing. Like right there, that is a regimen that works for Allison. Allison's got it down pat two to three weeks. Boom. And, you know, if you're seeing, you know, the things that you want to be seen by that, perfection, perfection. Tell me more. I get my trims faithfully every three months. Nice. Or is needed on at 10 weeks. Very nice. And I get a curl by curl cut because my hair is so coily, you can easily cut three to four inches and not realize it because of my shrinkage. Yes. <laughs> yes. So on that point, again, another bonus tip. <laughs> you can, you know, for me, I like to only trim on blown out hair. Um, it's the reason why I absolutely love my Revere. Girlfriend, I talk about the Revere a lot, not because, you know, I'm partnered with them, which full disclosure I am, but um, because it works. Like I've seen so much length retention ever since I started implementing, you know, stretching my hair more regularly. You don't have to stretch your hair with a Revere. You could stretch your hair through other methods as well. But um, to this point, yes, whenever I trim, I absolutely go in blown out so that we can see what we're cutting as opposed to like going maybe even on like this piece, for example, and like maybe like by itself, like cutting here. Well, if you stretch that, like that's this. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's just, it's, it's crazy. Like, you know, we, we don't want that. We absolutely don't want that. So um, Flor Florizella Thompson says, I'm washing my hair weekly now. My only problem is my hair does not define as well. It's just the way my hair is. So yeah, some people have hair that doesn't necessarily, it's not defined and it won't be defined. And that's okay um, because that's your hair type, right? And so um, there's a narrative out here right now that if your hair isn't defined, that means it's not moisturized. That's absolutely a myth. Your hair can be perfectly moisturized in its most healthiest state and your hair type just doesn't curl. You know what I mean? Like it could just be kinky and it's like a blown out texture naturally. Like that's the beauty of having textured Afrocentric hair. Um, it really does come in so many beautiful different shapes, sizes, textures, coils, curls, like straightness, kinky, coily, curly. Like it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. The variety that's available in, in, in black hair. Um, Tammy Moore says partnering with someone that understands fine hair is so important. So you don't have a setback every time you go for a trim been there done that yes and that is why I ride so hard for my girl Zermarla here in Toronto um she is the main stylist of her own uh salon called cloud nine curls and she understands fine natural hair because she has fine natural hair and she is fantastic she's very education focused she's very like hair education focused she's very um responsive to her clients needs she understands your goals and she works with you to get to your goals very much like what i do here on fine natural hair rocks except she's actually a hairstylist whereas i'm more of um a spokesperson and you know really an educator here content creator um in this space. So uh, Tiffany says, I love my Revere. It is so awesome. Honestly, it really is. Um, if you're interested in that, I will say for those of you who don't have it, we've got a Curlfriend Crew discount code of 10% off of the Revere. And it is always available in all of the videos in the description link if you're interested in that. Um, but yes, the Revere has really made a huge difference. Um, and there's a reason why it's like a you know community favorite for whoever has it. It really does work. Uh, Zal1234 says, hi, FNHR. I like your studio. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I think I finally kind of got it where I want it to be. Like the beauty stuff is over here. You know, I've got my degrees back there, some plants, some books. I mean, some books, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> however way that goes. But yes, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Tiffany says, I retain more length when I started stretching my hair or wearing twists. Yeah. The thing is, is that you know, and this is another bonus tip. There's a lot of bonus tips tonight. <laughs> but this bonus tip is like when you keep your hair more in a stretched out state, it prevents the opportunity for it to break off on itself. So right now I'm not wearing my hair in a stretched out state. I'm actually wearing it in, it's in a semi stretched out state. It was, I washed it. 
straight out the wash. I went ahead and I braided it with the leave-in conditioner and the styler. Um, and then this is what I ended up with in terms of like stretch curls, but not totally stretched. Um, I will never leave it in a fully shrunken state just because um, that is going to lead to breakage. Now, if I never had a length retention goal, a length goal, um, then I probably would wear it like that because I think it's beautiful. But um, because it just, it like the detangling after is insane. <laughs> it really is. Like I have 90%, 90 to 95% um, shrinkage. So yeah. <laughs> uh, my Miracle 79 says, I brought the Revere because of you. It's wonderful. Congratulations. And thank you for letting me know that. It really makes me so happy to hear that you purchased it and you like it. Um, because, you know, if you didn't like it, yeah, <laughs> I feel terrible. Um, but nevertheless, like if you don't like it, feel free to let me know too. Um, I think that that information is really important. But you know, the great thing is, is that if you purchase it, you don't like it within the first 30 days, you can send it back and get a full back, full money back guarantee. Um, so that is really amazing as well, too. And I'm really happy you like it because I, I love it. It's made such a huge difference. Uh, Gardenia in Bloom says makeup so pretty. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Coily code. Hey, girl. Hey, hey. Hey, girlfriend. <laughs> uh, my Miracle 79. Do you use the Revere hair cream? So I have used some of their products. I don't use them a ton um, because I do prefer my tried and true. So in terms of the heat protectant, I love to use. Uh, oh, my gosh. What is it called again? Um, oh my gosh. Oh, it has a, like a red top on it. And the whole thing is like, uh, silk infusion. There it is. Um, it's the silk infusion that I like to use. And it really does an amazing job from cheap of like really just keeping the strands healthy and not like, you know, burning off and stuff like that, or, or not burning off, but like, um, heat damage. Island Girl says my hair gets too tangled when it's not stretched. I have an 80% shrinkage, shrinkage rate. Yeah. And that's another, you know, like unseen, um, very little spoken about area of natural hair growth or breakage rather, right? Like you could be wearing your hair in shrunken states because people, you know, rightfully so talk about not using heat too much. You don't want to flat iron all the time. You don't want to forever be using abrasive blow dryers. All of that is true, but there absolutely is a point where like those benefits are being, um, you know, removed by the fact that like you've got a lot of shrinkage because the shrinkage, like again, like the loving up on each other, that can cause a lot of breakage. So um, for me personally, like I, if I want to really have a month where I see most of my length retention, I will use my Revere once, max twice for the month and, you know, really enjoy stretched out looks. Um, Guardian Bloom says, I always air dry, but is it better to blow dry? I think it's ideal to air dry, like if, but only if when you're air drying, you're not going to be manipulating your hair too much. So if you are air drying, like something like what I did, this is an air dry look. Um, I literally just braided it. So washed it, applied my leave-in conditioner in the shower, applied my products in the shower, and then braided one, two, three, four braids in the shower, and I left it alone. Um, and then, you know, after like three or four days of wearing my wigs, that's when I detangled or took it out rather with some oil and now I'm just wearing it like this so in that case yes but um you know the blow drying I find helps too with the Revere I don't blow dry with a regular blow dryer I would not recommend that on a regular basis just because it's a lot of tension um you've got the blow dryer that's blowing the hot heat and then you've got the brush that you need to like brush through it all of that is just too much I I wouldn't do it on my hair I wouldn't recommend it either um, yes, Chasey, cheese silk infusion is bae. And girlfriend, all of these products, most of them, if they're available on Amazon, they are available in the Fine Natural Hair Rocks Amazon shop. Um, and if they're not, I can show you where they are as well. But uh, yeah, there's so many really great products in there and wigs too. Um, the wigs that I like that I wear the most that I find have really helped and take minimal efforts in, you know, blending, I find um, those are in there as well too. Coily Code, did you ever find wearing extension hair made your hair super itchy? I just took down my twist. I used Marley hair and I found that my scalp itched so much. Yes, I don't know what has changed. You're not the first person who told me that. And I've had that experience too. So it's funny, Coily Code. I was just talking to my mom last night about how, you know, there's something that has changed in the synthetic fibers in the synthetic hair. So I don't know if your wig was synthetic or not the wig, sorry. Um, I'm guessing the twists were synthetic because Marley hair is usually synthetic. And the itchies were insane. Like I would itch so much 
that I would lose my edges and I would lose the back hair as well too. So I just stopped doing that because I don't know if a chemical has changed or maybe the factory conditions are not the greatest. I don't know, but nothing is worth the itches. So I just stopped doing that. But I have seen some people will wash out the twists to avoid that, um, which can really help as well too. Uh, Gardenia in Bloom says, my hair gets very straight as the days go by and it's annoying. Yeah, like there are styles that you can do. So like I find like updos are really helpful for, you know, maintaining the protective style, um, the low manipulation style. I also feel like, you know, the more that you wear styles that are taking advantage of the texture that you have and not fighting against it is the more that the hair will flourish, the hair will grow. Alison Terrell says, I always air dry in big twists before I style in mini or two strand twists. I want to invest in a blow dryer. Yeah, I think that that can really help. Um, you know, again, like that's taking advantage of the stretching bit. And then once your hair is stretched, you can absolutely work on more styles. Now, I've been doing some research here on YouTube and I found like a conversation, um, some rhetoric that like, us doing different things to our strands, manipulating it, not wearing it fresh out the shower um, can be a sign of like trying to like fight the natural curls that you have. I don't necessarily agree with that, particularly if you are somebody who's looking for a certain outcome for your hair. Um, I think that there are methods that are very important to do to make sure that you get to the goals that you're, you're making for yourself. Uh, Patricia says, I started using the Nature's Little Secret, Secret Pre-Poo. I am loving it. I love that. I am not affiliated with Nature's Little Secret, but that one was too good. <laughs> There's no way. So that's another thing. Here on Fine Natural Hair Rocks, whether I'm affiliated with the company, yes or no, if it works, it works. <laughs> and I'm definitely going to share it. So yeah, that one's a holy grail. It works for me every single time. It is amazing for detangling before wash day. I love it. Lady J says, how long is your hair and what is your goal length? So my hair at this point, when it's fully stretched out, silk press, it's just above bra strap length. Curly, it's about right here. Um, it does, I have a lot of shrinkage. So right here, when I do a braid out, look like this. Um, and then when I shr shrinkage is like 90%, like <laughs> my shrinkage is amazing. It really is. Um, my goal length. So I'm just hovering over bra strap length. My goal length is waist length. Um, I would love to have waist length hair. I will be happy with mid back length, but um, I want to see it get to that stage. And once it gets to that stage, then I will start to do more creative, exciting things with it. Like maybe color it, maybe lock <laughs> who knows but right now the goal is to see how long can i get this can like right now it's the longest it's ever been in my life can i go further than this everything beyond today is just cherry on the top <laughs> uh silo do you still use steamers i no longer use steamers only because of time but if my hair is super dry that is another tip that will help you get rid of fine natural hair breakage so whenever i have breakage and it's because of moisture issues not having enough moisture a steamer oh my gosh mwah, it works so well so you put your deep conditioner on your hair and then you go in under the steamer and you sit there for 30 minutes you could read a book. You could watch Fine Natural Hair Rocks. <laughs> I had to. You guys, I'm, I'm, I'm crazy like that. But anyways, you can do whatever you want and <laughs> chill and, you know, get the moisture going in your mask. And it will double the efforts of whatever is going on in that mask. So I really love that. Um, it's relaxing and it works. Uh, but since, you know, achieving moisture levels that I need on my strands to continue to make the gains in terms of length, um, I no longer do the steamers just because of time. But if there is a lot of time, I will absolutely do it because it's amazing. Quilly code. Yes, I never had that itching problem as a kid getting braids. Yeah, something has changed, girlfriend. Something has 100% changed because everyone's complaining about that. People who were not, you know, people who had no issues now have issues like I don't know, something needs to be corrected, though, because that's not cool. And I don't like scratch, scratch, scratching for the life of me. Like, it doesn't even, it doesn't look right either. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't feel good. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Nadum says, a lot of the synthetic hair is covered in some sort of flame-resistant chemical. I think that's what's causing the issues, because I truly don't remember that. I don't remember those types of issues. I don't remember that type of, like, skin irritation. I don't remember any of that. This is all new. So I don't know. They, I hope someone's watching this at some point from either Outre or um, what's another synthetic group that makes a lot of hair? Um, Free Tress. Who's another one? Uh, Sensational. I'm just listing all, all. I don't know if necessarily theirs are causing people itchies, but I have seen 
that synthetic hair does cause a lot of problems. Coily Code, I want to hear wear half wigs, but how can you wear wigs with combs without causing damage to the hairline? That's where my most fragile hair is. Excellent question. Fantastic question. So when you're wearing your wigs, do not, and I repeat, do not put the comb in the exact same spot every single time. If you're trying to do this as perfectly as possible, ideally you're switching up where you put your combs, where you put your, uh, you know, the little, what do you call it there? Bobby pins. Um, you're switching it up every single time. Yes, it's not going to be as secure. There are ways around that. So you can get like a wig grip and put it on top of that. And then also put your, um, the little bobby pins on it. That has proven very helpful for me. Um, but if you keep putting the comb in the exact same spot, that's way too much manipulation. Eventually that hair right there is going to break off. So um, yeah, I hope that solves that. I learned that the hard way. So I'm really glad you asked that question so that you don't have to learn that the hard way as well. Uh, Guardian Bloom says, are you in media slash actress? Thank you. Thank you so much. I actually do have a very little bit of media actress training. Um, I did act prior to starting Find Natural Hair Rocks. Um, there is actually a video here, I think. I think it's still public. Um, of being on the Sony channel in a really cool, like it was like a documentary or whatever, a crime documentary. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. But yes, yes, I do have media and actress training. Um, it is near and dear to my heart. I love creativity. I have a very strong left-right brain connection in the sense of like, yes, law is really strong, but yes, uh, creativity and, and acting and, and, you know, art is strong too. So thank you for asking that. Uh, the porosity hair test didn't work for me. Is there a reliable method? There are some me other methods that you can absolutely try. I'm going to go ahead and drop the video. It's an old video. So, um, you know, bear with me. <laughs> um, and it's a Christmas video too. So just giving you the heads up that it is absolutely one of those videos that are older in nature, but definitely the information is legit. Like it really is. Uh, but yeah, there are at least four, five total different ways that you can choose how to figure out what your porosity levels are. Um, and, and it's really easy to do. So there's the water test. Um, but if the water test doesn't make sense, then there's like a finger test where you slide your fingers on up the strand. There's so many different ways that you could do this. Uh, Quilly Kit said, thanks to you. Thank you. That's great advice. I'm glad to hear it. Island girl, I don't use the combs in wigs at all. I just make sure the wig is on tight enough. Yeah, same here. I mean, it does feel a little like slippy slidey. <laughs> <laughs> and that can cause stress. It really can. Cause like, let's be real. Nobody wants their wigs sliding off in public. Um, but I mean, if it does slide off, I'm gonna pick it up. Right? <laughs> I'm going to pick it up. I paid for that. It's mine. But all jokes aside. Um, yes. I tend to use sometimes one, two, three. And then I, I tend to leave the back comb in because I find the back comb doesn't cause that much issues. But um, in terms of the front comb, the front comb that has to go. Cause like it, you can see that breakage immediately, right? Whereas like the back, you can't really see it. And like the hair at the back of my head is a little bit more, um, it's a lot more actually stronger than the hair at the front and it's more moisturized too. So I give a little bit more of a beating and abuse back there um, than I do up here. Up here is like the baby hairs, they're called baby hairs for a reason. They really do need to be like protected at all costs. Uh, Island Girl says, Guardian and Bloom, I knew it. You're good at articulating. Thank you. Thank you so much. That really means a lot to me. I do miss acting. Um, I still have an agent. Don't really do it as much anymore just because of the, the work that I'm doing with the school board. But um, it is something that maybe one day I might return to for sure. Uh, thanks, Curly Code. Um, <laughs> Tiffany says, I hate the water test because if you have a lot of product in your hair, then it will likely be low porosity also the test doesn't account for surface tension yeah and you know what it doesn't test it doesn't account for like you know any kind of builds up on your hair either like if you just came out of using a ton of products it doesn't really account for that either because the ton of products is on your hair causing it to look like your low porosity so um that's why there are other ways to do it as well um that you don't necessarily have to focus on the one way and you can even do all tests if you've got the time and the interest in doing so and just see where you land the most on and then follow that for me i find the most effective test is the hair strand test where you take one piece of hair and you literally slide your hands up if you can feel the you know it feels bumpy then you're high porosity 
If you slide your hair up, it feels smooth, and then you are low porosity. The only problem with that is it's difficult to tell what's medium porosity. Um, but the caveat to that is that medium and low porosity hair tend to have similar regimens anyways, hair regimens. So if you think you're low porosity, but you're actually medium, um, you will be okay. Um, and similarly for high porosity, if you think you're high porosity, but you're actually medium, you will also be okay. So I think that you should use um, all of the tests together as one C. Um, if you island girl, if your hair dries super fast and can't retain moisture, then it's likely high porosity. Exactly. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. So we talked about never skipping trims. Returning back to the rough fabrics piece, um, that also includes sitting on your couch. Like I will be watching a movie with hubby, you know, we're relaxing, the dog's on the floor. I will literally leave that couch if I want to lean my head back. I will go upstairs to my bedroom, grab my bonnet and come back down. Like, yes, being cute at night while you watch your movies, you know, cuddle up with whoever is nice, but I'm not risking hair breakage for that. <laughs> like, I'm not. So um, that you really need to make sure that you're aware of like how your hair is rubbing up on the couch because even that can cause breakage over time as well. <laughs> Coldy Coat says, oh my gosh, yes. I use my bonnet for my car seat, LOL. Yes, it works. It absolutely works. Car seats, scarves, hoods, couches, all that stuff can cause breakage if you're not, you know, careful, right? So um, 100% don't feel any ways about it because if you can avoid the rough fabrics, why not? Uh, patience. Hey, patience says, do you use Olaplex? I absolutely do use Olaplex. Um, I don't use it on any particular schedule right now because I've got some other proteins that I'm trying to go through first. But whenever I go to the salon, um, I do get it applied by my stylist, um, the hair care specialist. And I also have the products at home as well, too. Um, but yes, Olaplex is fantastic. It really is. I would use it as a protein. So um, I was also confused about like, where does this product really land? They don't market it as a protein. People are saying it's not a protein, but it really isn't moisture either. It's not moisture that much I know. So um, it has to be one or the other. And the closest thing it is to is as a protein treatment. So I wouldn't use it overly, like I wouldn't use it all the time. I would use it on an as needed basis. Right now, I would say the frequency that I'm using Olaplex is about every month to two months, if I'm being accurate. If all else fails, if all else fails and you are still experiencing fine natural hair breakage, the next thing that you should do is consider investing in a humidifier. So I was there. I had no clue what was breaking off my hair. I did purchase the humidifier. I don't use it as much. The great thing about the humidifier is it will also hydrate your skin too. So um, oftentimes if you've got dry hair, you might have dry skin too because of the weather and, and just the abrasiveness of the cold. Um, the humidifier really helps. It helps to kind of mitigate um, what's going on with the crazy feeling of like the heat. It mitigates that from the furnace and then, you know, outside. So, I mean, if you're always in one spot, you work in a particular area, I work, this is my office, I work in here, um, then I might have the humidifier going. I haven't used it recently, full disclosure, but I find that it's very helpful um, and got pretty well priced humidifiers. The one that I have was no more than 30 bucks Canadian. So if it was $29.99 Canadian, chances are likely you could probably find it for like 12 to 15 dollars us um if you were to go to like a target or burlington or whatever you know how they got those discount stores in the states um you can probably find one there at any of those big box like we sell everything type stores <laughs> um but yeah girlfriend it was such a joy i see another comment came through um Island Girl says, I'm an oddity, very oily skin with super dry hair. Oh, wow. Yeah. So in that case, like you, you, in your case, you really do have to like, I guess, pick and choose what works that won't impact your skin, but will also impact in, in the ways that you want your hair. So um, maybe the humidifier might not work if that makes the, uh, your oily skin even more oilier, uh, but, or maybe it will, I don't know. But I think that um, there's something to be said about the humidifier adding moisture to the hair in very similar ways as like a steamer would, right? Um, another bonus tip on this in terms of the steamer bit is in the morning, if I feel like my hair is dry, I will apply my products and then take my shower without anything on my hair. So the steam from the shower creates more penetration of the, the um, products. 
And sometimes I will either do it before or do it after. I tend to like doing it more after actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because the shower will open it on up. You put your products on top of it. And then as my hair closes, it will keep it in. So if you've got high porosity strands, it might benefit you to do it first and then go in the shower. So it kind of seeps on in. But if you've got low porosity strands, what I do, excuse me, might work better for you. Uh, Patricia, what do you think about wearing drawstring ponytails? Are they protective styles? That's such a great question. So drawstring ponytails, I like as well too. I'm just a little bit scared of them because the teeth are always in the exact same spot, right? Um, so similar to the half wigs, um, what you might want to do with that is go ahead and just apply the, the drawstring ponytail and then use um, bobby pins to kind of force it on in so that you're not always using the exact same comb on the exact same spot. The only problem is that it's a lot easier to fall off. So for that reason, like I, I try not to wear the ponytails too often. And the other bit is that I haven't really seen a ponytail that really matches my strands in like believable ways. Um, and for me, that's really important too. So I would say they're a protective style if you're able to wear them on like a weekly to bi-weekly to even a monthly basis. Um, but in terms of it being one of the better protective styles, just for the things I mentioned, they're not for me, but I can see why it might work for someone else, especially if like you're able to find a texture that matches your own. Coily code. I'm now sporting mini-ish twists in my hair. My ends aren't tucked, but they're a little higher than my shoulders. Will it still be able to retain length if not tucked? My scalp hates tension. Buns. Yeah, so, you know, buns can be, I've heard of that before. Buns being uncomfortable, like sometimes it's too tight. That happens to me too, where it's like I have a headache. I don't know why. Um, you know, the good thing that you can do, you can do roll styles, like roll and tuck styles. So if you don't want to wear a bun, maybe you do like those roll and tuck styles where like it's rolled at the back. And then you just put like a bobby pin in it to hold the structure of the look. Um, Janelle Monet is, a, is famous for that. Like her older styles where she would do like the roll and tuck and she would have like it kind of like lean to one side and she'd have like the amazing makeup to match with it and like gorgeous outfits and, and accessories to match. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. But yes, I see Courtney Coded. She's yes, exactly. <laughs> Those are fantastic. They're so, so good uh, for, you know, I think that's probably the lowest manipulation type of hairstyle you could wear. Now that I'm thinking about it, because bobby pins, they, oh, one thing about bobby pins, when you are using your bobby pins, make sure this is one of the sneakiest little ways that your hair could break off. You know, the tip if the tip falls off of that bobby pin, chuck it, chuck it quick. Cause like that sharp edge, while it may not, maybe you have a high tolerance to pain or discomfort, but the strands, fine strands will break right off if they're coming into contact with that sharp edge. So me, I am notorious. If I see one of my, you know, bobby pins and the, the soft tip is falling off, I chuck it in the garbage real quick. So all of these tips about using bobby pins, it will cause you more damage than good if those bobby pins don't have that protective little piece on the end. It's usually plastic and it looks like a little circle that sits on the top of it. Um, if it's missing that, don't use it. <laughs> don't use it at all because whatever it comes into contact with, it will break. Um, Gardenia, I have to detangle every other day. Otherwise, it's a hot mess. Yeah, see, like if you're one of those naturals or you got to detangle your hair every single day or else it's going to like break off. And, and, and tangle up on itself, then, you know, you definitely want to create a regimen of styling ideas around that. So for me personally, like at the stage when my hair was really dry, it was breaking off, my moisture levels were very low. Um, I felt that my hair was like really getting really stuck on itself really easily as well. And at that time, I would lean more into longer term protective styles that included braids, not mini twists and mini braids, but like cornrows like thicker cornrows like medium cornrows and I would wear the wig um while I improved my moisture levels so that's just one way that you can maybe get around that Garnia but um yeah thank you so much curl friend for joining me this Friday um we've been hanging out together for about an hour and a little bit now I really appreciate you for your time your love your support your your energy on on this topic as we navigate our fine natural hair journey together if you did enjoy this video please this live stream video please go ahead and like if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and subscribe as well hit up the little notification bell that's right behind it so you never miss out also, um, sometimes bad things happen here on YouTube and, you know, creators and their audiences get disconnected. If you want to remain connected no matter what, 
I've actually got a newsletter down below. I don't spam inboxes. Um, you don't have any time for that. I don't have any time for that. Nobody has time for that. So <laughs> I only send you stuff when there's actually a need to send you something um, as it relates to something new, cool, popping here on Find Natural Hair Rocks. Um, I will be back for sure on Monday. Um, high likelihood that I will be back with a new video tomorrow and Sunday as well, just a shorts. Um, but yeah, if you know anybody who needs natural hair advice, needs to be, you know, somebody who's willing to walk hand in hand, step by step with them, then definitely send them on over to find natural hair rocks. I would absolutely love to help. Thanks. Have a great blessed weekend. And I will see you in the next video or in the community tab. <laughs> love you lots. Talk soon. Bye.